In 2022, I coded a small game using Python and Pygame Woo! just for fun. I posted a short about it and moved on. But over the past few years, that one short quietly exploded. 190,000 views. YouTube paid me five bucks. Oh. And now it's the best performing piece of content on my entire channel. The thing is, I never made a tutorial for it until now. I'll walk you step by step through how to build that exact game. It's a timing game. Stop the countdown at a random number chosen at the start. Today, we're starting simple. A full screen game window, a live countdown timer, and the groundwork for everything that comes next. Let's get into it. Pygame is a Python library for building games. If you don't have it installed, you can run pip install pygame in your terminal. For this tutorial, I'll be writing my code in PyCharm. I'm using PyCharm's Community Edition, which is totally free. First, we're going to import everything we need at the top of our file. Import pygame, import random. Random will help us to generate a random target number, the number the user is trying to land on, and import sys. So this will help us to cleanly quit the game whenever the window is closed. Let's set up some of our game constants. We can start with the game window size. Let's create a comment, screen, and game constants, and set X and Y both equal to 1024. X and Y represent the width and height of our game window. You can adjust these numbers if you want a different window size. Now let's initialize Pygame and create the game window. Okay, hashtag initialize the game, pygame.init. We always need to initialize pygame before using any of its features. Then we create the game window using our X and Y dimensions. Screen equals pygame, display, set mode, and we're gonna pass in X and Y. Now let's set the game window title. This will be the title you see at the top of the game box. Pi game, display, set caption, stop me if you can. Now I'm the type of person that likes to run the code as I go because I have trust issues and I just want to make sure things are working and I'm not just endlessly typing a whole bunch of things. So let's see if the title is actually set. So let's set up our game loop. Our game loop runs our whole game logic. So we create a variable called running and we set that equal to true running equals true. Then we create a loop. So while our game is running, while running. So within our game, we're going to have an event loop. An event loop processes inputs and events during the game. So for example, it listens for things like mouse clicks, if the window is being closed, our countdown updates, etc. So let's create it. We can check for different events. So for events in pygame.events.get, if the event type is ever pygame.quit, we stop running our program. So let's run the code and we will see stop me if you can at the top. Okay, let's keep going. Now let's set up our game fonts. Our game has two different font sizes, one for regular text and one for the huge countdown number in the center. To organize this, we can create a comment for our UI text and styles. Okay, font size equals 20. Countdown font size equals 150. We'll use Comic Sans MS for our game text. Font equals pygame.font.sysfont. We'll pass in Comic Sans MS and our font size. And then let's do our countdown font. So what we'll use is pygame.fonts.fonts. And we're just using a different font here because I wanted it a little bit more bold than Comic Sans. So for this one, we'll pass in free sans bold dot ttf and also our countdown font size. Now let's initialize the clock. The clock helps us control how fast the game updates, also known as the frame rate. Clock equals pygame.time.clock. This clock keeps the game running at a steady pace, making animation smoother and ensuring the speed stays consistent on all devices. Now let's set up the background. Create an assets folder where you will put your background image. You can use any image you want. I got my image from Unsplash. Make sure your image is in the assets folder. I titled my image background.jpg. We are going to use pygame.transform.scale to help us load our background image and to resize that image to match the width and height of our window. So background equals pygame.transform.scale. 
we'll pass in pygame.image.load and then our background image, which is in our assets folder, and then also X and Y, the width and height of our game window. Now let's draw the background image onto the screen. Blitz, Blit is short for block transfer, helps us to draw or place elements on the screen. Screen.blitz, and we'll pass in background and also our destination, 00. zero. And we need to update our display, pygame.display.update. Now let's run our code to see the background image. Yay! Next, let's set up our countdown. This is the heart of our game. We create a constant initial countdown. This represents the big starting number the user sees on the screen. So our initial countdown is gonna be equal to 20. This is what's gonna go down from like 20, 19, 18. We create two variables, counter and countdown. So counter countdown is equal to initial countdown and also the string initial countdown. So the number version counter will be for logic and math and the string version countdown is what we actually display on the screen. Next we create random number. Random number will pick the target number the user is trying to stop the countdown at. For each game, the number will be picked at random. Random number equals random dot ran ints and we'll have this be any number between one to initial countdown, but let's subtract three just to give the user some time to like adjust to what's going on in the game. But you don't have to have that minus three there. Let's continue setting up our countdown. We need our countdown to decrease by one every second. So we can use pygame.time.setTimer to help us do that. We pass in pygame.user event, which will be our user defined event and also 1000. So pygame.time.setTimer, we pass in pygame.user event and 1000. What we're doing here is setting a timer that would trigger a user event every 1000 milliseconds. 1000 milliseconds is one second. So basically this is saying every second trigger a user event. So now we can go back to our event loop. And if the event type is pygame.user event, that means a second has passed. So what we can do is decrease our counter to show that. Also, as long as our counter is greater than or equal to zero, we will also update the countdown number that we see on the screen. So if event type is equal to pygame.user event, the counter decreases by one. As long as our counter is greater than or equal to zero, countdown is equal to the string of counter. When we're at zero, it's game over, and we don't need to display any negative numbers. Next, we want to render the countdown number so it shows up on the screen and place it in the top center of the screen. Let's create a constant text color. We set it equal to 255, 255, 255 to represent white. We will use dot render to help us. Dot render helps us to turn a number into something Pygame can display. It's like the graphic version of the number. So in our game loop, Countdown render equals, we take our countdown font from before and call dot render, passing in countdown, true, which will just help our text to look smoother, and our text color constant we just created. Next, we're going to center this graphic version of the countdown on the screen by creating a rectangle around it. For countdown rect, we take that countdown render and we call get rect. We pass in the center, x divided by 2, and also 320. 320 is just helping us to get into that top area for where we want the number to be. So countdown rect equals countdown render dot get rect, and then the center is going to be x divided by two and also 320. You can play around with that 320 number as well. Now let's display this on the screen. Screen dot blitz, we pass in countdown render and also countdown rect. Now let's run the code and see what this looks like. Now, it's a little bit difficult to read that white text on the background, so let's add an overlay with some transparency. Overlay is equal to pygame.surface, we'll pass in our x and y, overlay.setAlpha, we pass in 100, and overlay.fill, we'll pass in 000. And then we can use blitz to draw it on the screen, screen.blit, overlay, destination 00. And yes, yeah, now that overlay is looking a little better. Finally, we'll call clock.tick and pass in 60. This will cap the frame rate at 60 frames per second so the game doesn't run too fast. And that's it for part one. You've now got a working game window and a live countdown. 
In the next video, we'll add more to our game. Subscribe so you don't miss it. And let me know in the comments if you're coding along or adding your own twist. I'll see you in the next one.